God is a God who answers prayers again and again and again. There's a beautiful passage in Ezekiel 36, verse 37. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Once again I will yield to the plea of the house of Israel and do this for them. I will make their people as numerous as sheep, as numerous as the flocks for offerings at Jerusalem during the appointed feasts. So will the ruined cities be filled with flocks of people then they will know that I am the Lord. When you look at the situation in the Ukraine today, and you see the revolt of many people trying to chase away uh, the government, uh, sometimes people do not realize that the leadership uh, of many of these groups that are involved in it are extremely right-wing. They are totally anti-Semitic. Uh, and they have sworn that they will cleanse the Ukraine uh, from Jews and from all kind of other people. And recently I heard that a synagogue uh, southwest from Kiev has been torched because Molotov cocktails were thrown into the synagogue. Happily, not a person uh, was wounded or killed, but the signals, the signs are clear. Jews get out. And I think what Israel should do is urge the Jewish people to leave the Ukraine as soon as possible. One of the rabbis in Kiev already made this statement, pack your bags and return to the promised land. Uh, you have a tendency today uh, among Jewish organizations in Israel, uh, instead of really encouraging Aliyah, to go back to the promised land. They want more or less uh, protect and support and strengthen uh, the national groups of Jews in various countries in the world. But the Lord says, pray and I will answer your prayer. I will get you safely to the land and the land will be full of people. We live in the days that the Lord is bringing his people, his Jewish people, back to the promised land. We see prophecies being fulfilled and the Lord expects us even to be involved in that process and take up our responsibility by helping the Jews in whatever way we can to return to the land. They should pray to the Lord and we should pray to the Lord so that he will make it happen. Why is he bringing them back to the land? because the time is coming closer and closer that he will reveal himself to his Jewish people, to the people of Israel. After the national restoration to the promised land of Israel, one day the spiritual restoration will take place. The prophet Joel speaks clearly about it. It's a well-known passage in Joel 2 uh, where the prophet speaks about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's the passage that the Apostle Peter quotes on the day of Pentecost, on the Feast of Shavuot. Uh, you find it in Joel 2, as of verse 28. Afterwards I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This was partially fulfilled at the Feast of Pentecost, Shavuot, in Acts 2. Uh, for these feasts, these temple feasts, in those years, sometimes Jews from the whole the Roman Empire came to Israel, to Jerusalem, to the temple to celebrate the feast. It was an appointed feast of the Lord, it was a Jewish feast, and Jews were present. Sometimes over a million of Jews were present in Jerusalem. Now the prophet Joel speaks about the fact that on all flesh the Holy Spirit would be poured out. And that actually happened in Acts 2. All flesh in the sense of men and women, old and young, not just on a king or a prophet or a priest, as it happened in the times of the Old Testament. 
but the Holy Spirit in Acts 2 was not poured upon all the over one million people who were present at the feast. Uh, so that cannot be the final fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. And Peter says this is what Joel is speaking about. But the final fulfillment still has to come in the future, when the Holy Spirit will be poured out on the whole house of Israel, all men and women. When Peter quotes the passage from Joel 2, um, he also speaks about what Joel says, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and bellows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Now these signs in the sky that the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood didn't happen uh, in Acts 2. Again, he quotes it from the prophet of Joel, but there was not a blood moon, uh, a moon red as blood. There was not a darkening of the sun. Uh, there were no stars falling from the sky. But in the end times, uh, these apocalyptic events will take place in Israel, in Jerusalem, and these apocalyptic events take place on the whole of planet Earth. And in the midst of all that turmoil and things happening in the sky and things happening to planet Earth, there will be the final outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the whole house of Israel. And that will lead ultimately to the coming of the Lord and the coming of his kingdom. A final remark. Uh, you read a lot of uh, websites, uh, articles about the blood moon and there is a special phenomenon taking place in 2014 and 2015 that the red moon, the blood moon uh, will happen exactly on the first day of Pesach uh, as well as on the first day of Sukkot in the fall and that same thing will happen next year in 2015. Uh, this has happened only seven times uh, since the birth of Jesus. And when this happened in the past, uh, incredible events took place. This blood moon uh, phenomenon happened in 1492 and 1493 when the Jews were expelled from Spain and an enormous bloodbath, especially in the southern countries of Christian Europe, took place. This also happened in 1948-1949 when the State of Israel was established. It also happened in 1967-1968 when the city of Jerusalem was liberated and united and became the undivided capital of the state of Israel. So this year and next year it will happen again uh, and then in another hundred years it will not happen again. So many people are focused on this uh, phenomenon. Uh, it will be combined on certain dates with the sun becoming darkened. Um, uh, the, the solar eclipse uh, and so they have all kind of speculations about what will happen then to Israel and to the world. I think we should be careful with that. We know from the Bible that things will happen in the sky uh, and that they are signs uh, pointing towards uh, the coming of the Lord and pointing towards uh, the final outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Israel, but to try to interpret it in all kind of special ways and even get frightened by uh, this, uh, I think is not necessary and should not happen. We simply should stick to the Bible, understand that God holds the universe in his hands and leads all things of the history of mankind and the history of his church 
and the history of his people Israel towards his goal, which is the coming of the kingdom 